Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. I hereby call the local government committee to order. Madam Clerk, please take the roll. Representatives Alexander, Burkhart, Carr, Doggett, Hale, Haynes, Holsclaw, Love, Martin, McKenzie, Miller, Moon, Raper, Reedy, Rudd, Shaw, Slater, Stevens, Thompson, Vice Chairman Wright, Chairman Crawford. Present. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, do any of the members have any personal orders before we begin or announcements? Seeing none, we have 30 bills on the calendar today. Uh, we've had uh, several that's asked to be rolled, so we'll deal with them as they come up. And we've got several members that will be going in and out to present bills and other committees. And um, as usual, I'll try to take leadership and chairman first so we can get them back to their committees. So without further ado, House Bill 1209, without objection, has been rolled one week. House Bill 20028 by Leader Lambreth, without objection, has been rolled one week. House Bill 3, I mean, House Item 3, House Bill 1197 by Chairman Williams, without objection, has been rolled one week. Item number four on the calendar, House Bill 1058 by Chairman Vaughn. Is he in here? We will we will pick him up uh, down the list as they come in. Item number five, House Bill 1552 by uh, Representative Warner has without objection has been rolled one week. Item number four, House Bill 1058 by Chairman Vaughn. Got a proper motion and second. Chairman Vaughn, you're recognized on your bill, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize for being a little bit tardy. Uh, House Bill 1058, is, well, currently in the state of Tennessee, there's one jurisdiction that allows their judges to provide special powers to their probation and truancy officers, including the ability to go armed and that's in uh metro Nash nashville so what this judge this was brought to me by the uh juvenile court judge in memphis who asked for the same to remove the limitation to it being to just nashville but would include memphis so that they could then uh deputize their truancy and probation officers so that they could go armed when going into some pretty rough neighborhoods Great explanation, sponsor. Is there anyone with questions for the sponsor? <clears throat> Seeing none, without objection, we're ready to vote on House Bill 1058. Moving on to calendar and rules. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to calendar and rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Committee. Item six on today's agenda is Representative Littleton in the room. We will skip over that. Item seven is Chairman Hurt in the room. It's not okay. We will pick that one back up. I don't see uh, Chairman Cochran. Item nine, Representative Moody is not in the room. Item ten, Cheryl is not in the room. House Bill eleven. 1556 by Chairman Whitson. I do have two thirds majority vote in my office if anyone would like to see it. Chairman Whitson, you are recognized on your bill, sir. Thank you, Chairman, and check, uh, thank you, committee. This is a private act for the city of Franklin, and it will allow the vice mayor to vote when presiding over a meeting in the absence of the mayor. Any questions for the sponsor? Questions being called on the bill. We're ready to vote on House Bill 1556. Moving on to calendar and rules. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. 
bill moves on to calendar and rules. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Committee. Item number 12 is House Bill 09. No, I'm sorry. We're going to take item 19 out of order uh, and put it in slot 12. House Bill 0937 by Representative Alexander. Uh, Representative Alexander, we have a proper motion in second on the bill. Um, you're recognized on your bill, ma'am. Thank you, committee, and thank you, chairman. Um, voters can go to any precinct on election day and vote where you work, play, and live, or take a friend. It's what we prefer, you take a friend, so we increase our voters. Um, <clears throat> this is nothing but a convenience voting center bill. It will not change our precincts. It will not do anything, and it's for Washington County. Thank you uh, for the explanation. Uh, Representative Shaw, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I like what you said. I just want to make sure I understand. On election day. Only. Only. The voter can go and vote at any precinct. That what is What do they have to do? Alexander, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, that is correct. Providing they present that proper identification and all that. Representative Alexander? That is correct. Thank you, ma'am. Any other questions for the sponsor? Representative McKenzie. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Representative, for bringing this bill. This is this is a good bill. I I, uh, I I think it just makes makes perfect sense to, to you know in, in this day and age with an address and Google Maps and whatnot, you can tell you can determine what uh, precinct the person is going to vote in and pull it up um, um, and have those ballots available. So thank uh, thank you for bringing this piece. Uh, hopefully, we can, we can grow this to a few more counties. Thank Representative you. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, does this uh, bill apply only to Washington County? Representative Alexander. That is correct. Okay. Follow up, Representative Thompson. Uh, no, that's all. Thank you. Any other questions for the sponsor? Representative Rudd, I recognize you. Thank you. I just want to say I kind of answer uh, a question that was asked and, and also to thank the sponsor. I believe there's six counties that have already been approved and there's a stringent requirements for fiber optics and computers and all that that has to be required for them to be able to do this properly by the uh, coordinator of elections. And there are two more counties of which this is one that's added. So they're gradually being added uh, as pilot programs each year. And then after they've used them for a few years, they're made permanent. So thank you for, for doing this and um, appreciate you. All right, committee. I do have uh, people here that have requested to speak. I will ask the sponsor of the bill, do you need them to speak? Um, I'm at the will of the committee, sir. Without objection, we'll go out of session and I won't, we will hear from uh, Mayor Joe Grandy. Mayor, if you'll please give us your name and affiliation. You have three minutes, sir. You're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will be very brief just to say that uh, Washington County is in full support of this as a uh, resolution going before the count, uh, county commission uh, Monday night uh, that will confirm the commission's support of it. We look forward to the opportunity to, uh, to increase voter participation in Washington County, and we thank the representative for bringing this forward uh, to uh, this committee and to the full house for approval. Thank you. Any questions for our speaker? Seeing none, we'll go back in session. Representative Alexander, you're recognized on your bill. Um, <clears throat> I just think this is a, a great way to get, to encourage voters to make it convenient for them. If you're on one side of town and you're taking grandmother to vote over here, you don't have to go to your precinct on the other side of town. You can vote right there. They've done everything they Question can to make Question has been it called safe. on the bill. Mm -hmm. We're ready to vote without objection on House Bill 0937. Moving on to calendar and rules. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. 
Bill moves on to calendar and rules. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee. Representative Reedy, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion that we take up House Bill 632, which is item number 15. It's in the same vein as the Voting Center pilot program. Without objection, we'll take up item 15, which is House Bill 0632. We got a proper motion in second. Uh, Representative Darby, I do see that this bill has an amendment. Can you please give us your drafting code? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 005181. That is correct. Do I have a motion on the amendment? Proper motion and second on the amendment. Does the amendment make the bill, or would you like for us to put it on the bill to be discussed? If I could say one word about uh, the amendment there. This is You're kind recognized, of a, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's a uh, segue there for the bill that I'm presenting. Weekly County was one of the test programs for the convenient voting centers and our numbers was drastically higher than the state average the last two years. And the, uh, I talked to our administrator there, which was Alex Britt, and he, the correlation with the convenient testing centers was spot on. Chairman Holtzpaul, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairman. You telling me that Weekly County has fiber optics? <laughs> Representative Darby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's spotty right now, but we we are drastically improving it. Thank you, sir. Any other questions on the amendment? Seeing none, without objection, we'll vote on amendment five one eight one going on the bill. Please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill is now amended. You're recognized on House Bill six thirty two as amended. Representative Darby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as introduced, authorizes Henry County to establish a convenient voting center pilot program. And with that, I'll stand for questions. Any questions on to the sponsor? Seeing none, I think we're ready to vote. All those in favor of House Bill 0632, moving on to finance, ways, and means, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill's moving on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A little bit out of order, but Ms. Delana Green from Henry County, and she does a great job with uh, the voting center there, and her daughter have made the trip to Nashville if we could welcome them. Okay, we're going to back up a little bit and take care of our chairman and get them back to their committees. Uh, without objection, we're going to go to item number six, House Bill 1557 by Chairman Littleton. We got a proper motion in second. Chairman Littleton, I do see we have an amendment. Can you please give us your drafting code? 5144. 5144. Four, four. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we got a proper motion. Is there a second? Second on the amendment. Does the amendment make the bill or would you like to put on to discuss the bill? It makes the bill. Okay. It does. Uh, let's go ahead and vote on amendment number 5144 going on the bill. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is now on the bill. You're recognized on your bill as amended. Uh, this is for the great town of Ashland City. Instead of having their elections in December, they want to have their elections changed to August, and they also want to appoint a city administrator. Okay. Uh, any questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on item number six, House Bill 1557, moving on to calendar and rules. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to calendar and rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. And could I take a moment and introduce you are my, my shout-out for today is Anna DiCarlo. She's from Cheatham County, and she sees what it's all about today. So thank you. We've got a correction we need to make here um let me see which bill it is house bill 937 we sent to calendar and rules it actually goes to finance ways and means without objection we'll send it to finance ways and means okay let's see We'll go to item number nine, House Bill 90 by Chairman Moody. Got a proper motion, second on the bill. I do see it has an amendment. 
Chairman Moody, can you please give us your drafting code? Yes, I will, and good afternoon. That is 004799. That is correct. Do I have a motion on the amendment? Proper motion and second on the amendment. Does the amendment make the bill? Yes. We'll go ahead and vote and put the amendment on the bill to be discussed. Without objection, all in favor of amendment 4799 going on the bill, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Your bill is now amended. You're recognized, Chairman Moody. Thank you so much, and I'd like to thank you for allowing me to roll the bill as so that we could work on this amendment to make the bill even better. And so what the amendment does, it's still, uh, what it will do is uh, prohibit our metropolitan county and city cities from using taxpayer money for criminal abortions uh, and, and for any transportation to a state that does abortion. So what we did from the original, the other amendment, it just said abortion. And we wanted to work on this and make sure we weren't uh, harming any employees of those areas if they needed, like an ectop had an ectopic pregnancy or those things that are not criminal. So what that we all we did with this new amendment is add the word criminal abortion. All right. Any questions for the sponsor? Representative McKenzie, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, as I was uh, asking on 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 last time you presented it in subcommittee, um, I'm going to pull the string on that a little more. So is there, is there any other prohibition in state law? that tells the local governments how they can manage and direct their, their, their own employees? Chairman Moody. Yes, um, I think I have that answer right here in front of me. Um, some of the examples of the things state law prohibits or directs employees to do, county officials and employees are prohibited from buying surplus property except at public auction uh, employees shall publish certain notices in local newspapers. It defines duties of certain employees that work for cities and counties, like city managers, directors of schools. We spell out procedures for the removal of a city judge. I can keep going with a few more, but there there is precedence for that. Representative McKenzie? Thank you. Th th those uh, uh, things, while um, important, aren't... To me, that doesn't get to where you're 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 directing these employees on what and what not to do. The, you know, a conflict of interest. If someone's, you know, you, you uh, shouldn't buy equipment that that your employer owns, or uh, you know, you can talk about how a judge operates. But in this particular one, uh, it looks like if this is to pass, the state will actually be managing the city employees or municipality employees or whatever branch telling them what they can and can't do. So could you help me understand how that is is that is that constitutional? Chairman Moody. Uh, yes, it is. And uh, I think my response to it, this is would be taxpayer money that we're talking about. And of course, it it is an egregious misuse of taxpayer funds. And when these funds are used in this way, you're siphoning those funds that would go normally to critical city departments that handle much needed services. So that's what we're directing in this bill. Representative McKenzie for a follow-up. Thank you. Uh, the, the, the word egregious can be debated and we, we, we won't, won't do that in this in this forum, um, but we don't tell cities how many police, fire, um, how big their health department should be if they if they have one, um, because we believe in division of government and the fact that we need they generate their own tax base. And that these funds should not, I agree with you, they should not come from state funds. I, I agree with that. But if the city's, the municipality's tax base and their residents and their leaders agree that these things should be funded, whatever they are, um, hiring 12 policemen instead of 10, 
why would we as the state of Tennessee want to get in their business in that detailed of a way? Chairman Moody. To protect the use of the taxpayers' dollars. Representative Moon, Chairman Moon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To the sponsor, criminal abortion, criminal. Taxpayers' funds should not be used to participate in a criminal act. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Any other questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, without objection, we're ready to vote on House Bill 90, moving on to calendar and rules. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. The ayes have it. If you'd like to be recorded as a no, please see the clerk. Your bill's moving on, Chairman Moody. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. Okay, I appreciate everybody being uh, patient with us. We're trying to get the um, chairman and leadership out of here to go back to their other jobs. Uh, we're going to item seven, House Bill 0898 by Chairman Hurt. Got a proper motion in second. I do see that we have an amendment. I need that drafting code, Chairman Hurt. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I have 5694. That is correct. We've got a proper motion in second on the amendment. Does the amendment make the bill? Yes, sir. Without objection, we're going to vote to put the amendment on House Bill 0898. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The bill is now amended. You're recognized on your amended bill, Chairman Hurt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 898, as amended, would ensure land which is enrolled in federal or state conservation programs can maintain the Greenbelt status. A constituent of mine enrolled part of his farm in a wetland preservation program through USDA. The land is forever going to be maintained as green space, which is a goal of the Greenbelt program. However, his land was deemed to no longer be eligible for enrollment in the agricultural section of the Greenbelt law because he is not farming that land or making an annual income from that part of his farm. On appeal, an administrative law judge ruled my constituents should not be subject to rollback taxes due to entering into this conservation program. This legislation merely codifies this ruling to provide clarity for future landowners. I appreciate the work of the comptroller and the assessors of property for their input on this legislation. As amended, this bill requires assessors to take into account if a farm or forest property is enrolled in a federal USDA conservation program, has a state conservation easement, or is restricted by involvement in a state mitigation program. The ultimate goal for this legislation is to ensure there, there continues to be green space areas for Tennessee and generation, for generations to come. With that, Mr. Chair, I'll take any questions. Any questions for the sponsor? Question has been called on the bill. We're ready to vote on House Bill 898. Moving on to Finance, Ways, and Means. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill's moving on to Finance, Ways, and Means. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Committee. Uh, at this time, we're going to jump down to item 18, House Bill 0954 by Leader Campbell. Uh, I do... I do not see an amendment, so you're recognized on your bill, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. This bill uh, simply adds emergency services to the list of uses that the local government can choose uh, for the sports betting money. A, a certain percentage of that could go to emergency services uh, with this bill. Any questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, without objection, we're ready to vote on House Bill 954. Moving on to calendar and rules. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. You're moving on to calendar and rules. Thank you. Okay. At this time, let's go to item 10, House Bill 1555 by Leader Cheryl. I have received a recommendation, uh, a majority vote of two thirds in resolution form that it's in my office. If anyone would like to see it, we do have a proper motion second. and second on the bill. Leader Cheryl, you are recognized. Thank you, uh, Chairman and members. 
House Bill 1555 is a local bill for White County. Uh, this bill will allow the General Sessions Court for the White County to be able to hear and determine adoption cases just like the Chantry or the Circuit Court Judge Courts. It will streamline the court process for adoptions and make it quicker for foster children to be adopted in White County requiring political wait times. White County has already approved the resolution supporting this legislation, and I'm open to any uh, questions at this time. Any questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on House Bill 1555. Moving on to calendar and rules. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to calendar and rules. Thank you, Chairman and members. Item 13, House Bill 1534 by Chairman Reagan. Got a proper motion in second. I have received a two-thirds majority resolution. It's in my office. If anyone would like to see it, you're recognized on your bill, bill Chairman Reagan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Uh, this bill repeals sections of the Anderson County Private Act relative to county service officers. It allows Anderson County to get rid of a redundant and unnecessary position by doing repeals of Chapter 396 of the Private Acts of 1947 and Chapter 5, pardon me, 358 of Private Acts of 1959. This, this bill will have no effect unless two-thirds of the Anderson County legislative body approves it. With that, I ask for your support. Any questions for the sponsor? Question has been called on the bill. We're ready to vote on House Bill 1534, <clears throat> moving on to calendar and rules. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to calendar and rules. Okay, let's, Mr. Mr. Chair, I have a couple more. Uh, item number 28 on your calendar, if you mind. Let's see here. Item 28 is Senate Joint Resolution 11. Without objection, we'll take up Senate Joint Resolution 11. Proper motion and second. You are recognized on your SJR, Chairman Reagan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This bill simply recognizes the achievement of local, state, federal, and private sector accountants, auditors, and financial managers, specifically for the Association of Government Accountants. This bill was brought to me by a CPA in the Senate uh, requesting that I carry it in this body. The summary is, is from Chair Chairman Roberts, and I ask for a favorable vote. Any questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on so Senate Joint Resolution 11, moving on to calendar and rules. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to calendar and rules. Mr. Chairman, I have item number eight. Is that one? Ready? Chairman Reagan, I do not see your name on House Bill 1277. Okay, so um, I have to have the member. He's on there? Okay. Chairman Reagan, apparently you are on there. Uh, it's not printed on our copy, but <laughs> we're going to recognize you on House Bill 1277. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And as usual... Everybody up here knows we never make mistakes. Oh, no. However, uh, this bill is being brought because at the request of a, a county that I represent, and since I only represent one, you can figure out which one that was, uh, we passed a bill last year uh, allowing um, uh, the county to remove and appoint members of historical zoning commissions. After we passed that bill and they tried to implement it, they found out that it was very impractical for them. So all this bill does is repeal the sections that we passed last year. And with that explanation, I stand ready to answer questions and ask for your support. Any questions for the sponsor? Representative McKenzie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And could you, could you uh, remind us what this will do uh, to the council as it sits now and what it would do going forward? Chairman Reagan. Thank you. Uh, as I said, we previously passed a bill that allowed the county uh, governing body to remove and replace uh, members of the local historic zoning commission on the basis of absences, uh, whether they had 
passed away or quit or whatever. And uh, they, they sent us their desired language. And I won't say who carried that, but nonetheless, uh, after we carried it and they got it back and implemented it, they found out that it wasn't practical. So this bill simply takes it back to what it was before the change we made last year. Representative McKenzie, do you have follow-up? Any other questions? Question has been called on the bill. Without objection, we're voting on House Bill 1277, moving on to calendar and rules. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to calendar and rules. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. We're going to jump down to item 12, House Bill 1553 by Representative Martin. We have a proper motion and second on the bill. I have received a two-thirds majority vote in my office. Uh, without um, Representative Martin, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. This bill is a private act for the City of Lexington. It updates their charter to current statutes. The biggest change in here is allowing the mayor to have a voice vote when there's a tie on the floor. Any questions for the sponsor? The chairman will take uh, privilege here. Is this your first bill in my committee? It is my second one. I had one last week. Yes, okay, but because we we normally have uh, on your first bill, we apparently missed that. So we'd like <laughs> to ask you to uh, sing the General Assembly fight song for the committee today. Uh, I would hope it's Rocky Top. I don't know. That's the only thing I do know. <laughs> would that work? <laughs> oh, no. All right. We're ready to vote on House Bill 1553. Moving on to calendar and rules. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Representative Martin, your bill is moving on. Let's see. Where are we at here? Item 16 on your agenda is House Bill 0781 by Representative Butler. Without objection, this bill will be taken off notice by request of the sponsor. <laughs> Item 17, House Bill 1134 by Representative McCallan. We have a proper motion in second. Representative McCallan, I do see this has an amendment. Please give us your drafting code. Thank you, Chair and Committee. Uh, my drafting code, Mr. Chairman, is 4857, and it makes the bill. That is correct. Do I have a motion on the amendment? Proper motion in second. The amendment makes the bill, so we'll go ahead and place that on the bill so it can be discussed. All in favor of House Bill, I mean, I'm sorry, Amendment Number 4857 going on to House Bill 1134. Please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Your bill is now amended. You're recognized, Representative McCallum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members, uh, this bill comes to us from the Tennessee County Officials Association. Uh, under current law, various counties' officials, such as our sheriffs, coroners, constables, trustees, etc., cetera, um, are all required to post bond upon election, varying amounts based upon the office that they hold. These bonds must be approved by the county's legislative body. Newly elected county officials take office on September 1st, but in most cases, the county commission does not meet until the third week of September. This means that there's a gap in coverage from the time the official takes office and the time the bond has been approved. Well, technically, we could put the county election, excuse me, county officials in violation of law for three weeks if they take any official actions during that time. The bill gives elected officials 30 days to file the bond, standardizes in the way in which these, which they must file these bonds. The bill further <clears throat> requires counties to maintain a minimum $150,000 blanket surety bond for all county employees not covered by individual bonds referenced elsewhere in the statute. In lieu of this blanket surety bond, counties may choose to insure this risk. And they can do through, through self-insurance should they choose, as long as the minimum limits are $400,000 per occurrence. Finally, the bill clarifies that notary publics who perform an official act of a notary public prior to filing the $10,000 bond required under current law commit a Class C misdemeanor. 
the County Mayor's Association, the TCSA, the County Commissioners, and the Tennessee Sheriff's Association are all in support of this piece. And with that, I stand for questions, sir. Anyone have any questions for the sponsor? The question is being called on the bill. All in favor of House Bill 1134, moving on to calendar and rules. Please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to calendar and rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Item 20, House Bill 0254 by Representative Raper. Uh, we have a proper motion and second. Uh, I do see it has an amendment. Uh, Representative Raper, can you please give us your drafting code? Yes, sir. 004659. And it that does is, make the bill. That is correct. Uh, without objection, we'll go ahead and place the amendment on the bill to be discussed. All in favor of amendment number 4659 going on to House Bill 254, please say aye. Opposed, no. Bill is now amended. Representative Raper, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As you're aware, me of, of citizens 65 years of age and older are on fixed incomes and live paycheck to paycheck. They are struggling daily with such things such as medical bills, utilities, fuel, clothing, and especially food. Property tax reimbursements are paid on the first $27,000 set forth by the General Appropriations Act on full market value. In 2018, an inflationary in increase was amended based on the Consumer Price Index. The annual increase is between 0% and 3%. My bill, if passed, would increase the appropriations of the first $40,000, so I'm increasing from $27,000 to $40,000 of full market value, and the inflationary increases would restart at that point. I think all the representatives in here want to give back to taxpayers. Passing this bill would not only give back, but it targets one of our most financially needed groups of people. And one other thing uh, I'll say is this, is uh, last year, in fiscal year 2022, there were a total of 109,794 claims uh, with 80,962 low-income elderly and low-income disabled recipients. You may say, well, how, how can they have more? Well, some are county and city taxes both. So uh, anyway, at, at this, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chair, I will open the floor to questions. Anybody have any questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on House Bill 0254. Moving on to Finance, Ways, and Means. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to Finance, Ways, and Means. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Committee. All right, gentlemen. We're going to back up to item 14. Again, I... I thank the committee for their patience in uh, jumping around today, but um, with uh, so many bills being presented at the exact same times, it's just uh, hard to work that out for everybody. But um, anyway, uh, House uh, Item 14, House Bill 126 by Representative Leatherwood. Proper motion and second. I do see it has an amendment uh, can you please give us your drafting code? Yes, sir. First, let me say I appreciate y'all bouncing around as I'm supposed to be hearing bills in health right now and presenting here. So I appreciate the chairman and the committee. The uh, drafting code 004212. That is correct. I've got a proper motion in second. Uh, just to let the committee know. We have received resolutions of two-thirds majority from um, Shelby County and Fayette County. So we have those on record if anybody would like to see them. Would you, uh, would you like to put the amendment on the bill to be discussed or discuss them separately? Um, I guess the amendment on the bill. Okay, without yeah. objection, we'll put Amendment 4212 on the... Um, House Bill 126, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Your bill's now amended. You're recognized, Representative Leatherwood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. And the amendment does make the bill. 
Uh, this bill clarifies the boundary line between Shelby County and Fayette County. And as the chairman already mentioned, uh, both counties have passed resolutions uh, actually with more than two thirds vote. Um, been working with the comptroller on this and the language in the two county resolutions and the language in this bill has all come from the comptroller's office. And with that, appreciate your support and I will answer any questions. Chairman Moon, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And this may need to go to legal. This will have to go back to both county commissions for ratification vote or am I in error? Without objection, we'll go out of session to hear from legal. Out of session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Josh Hughes from Legal Services. Uh, Chairman Moon, we, this will not need to go back to the, uh, but that they've, they've already done the votes that are necessary to make this happen. We just need to pass the bill. Any questions for the legal? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Uh, we do have uh, some speakers on the bill if they would like to be recognized. Lauren, would you like to be recognized? We recognizing you. Okay. All right. I wanted to catch you before you went out the door. Um, does any of the comptroller's people want to testify? Come on up. Give us your name and uh, who you're with. Sure. Matthew Hill with the comptroller of the Treasury's office. And, I, and I think um, what uh, Representative Leatherwood has described is, is correct. It's already something that uh, the taxpayers are already paying their property taxes in Fayette and Shelby County. No voters would change here. This is really just uh, essentially a cleanup. All right. Any questions for the speaker? Representative Miller. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. And, and let me apologize. I was in conversation when you made your comments. And, and could you kind of repeat? exactly what the bill will do and will not do yeah so the 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 currently the taxpayers there are some confusion where that county line resides um you know uh, currently we use during the redistricting process we use the county line where the uh, property assessors have a assessment line where which uh, which fayette county property assessors pay and then the fayette and then the shelby county property tax or property property taxpayers and all this would do is move that county line to the agreed upon assessment line that both property assessors in Shelby and Fayette County have agreed to. Representative Miller. So when we say that, and the chairman said, well, he's received from the county government as well as Fayette government, county government, a resolution supporting this bill. How does the tax assessor get in? involved in that equation you recognize speaker well I, I, because i guess it goes back to part of it i guess got involved because of the um some of the there were some candidates there that were trying to run for house districts and then there was a county commission and i believe that's where property and the property tax assessor got involved uh, there was some questions on residency and there was some residency issues where was this person a shelby county resident or not that person did pay shelby county property taxes follow up representative miller well well for the sponsor okay thank you yeah. any Chair. questions for the speaker representative thompson thank you mr chairman um will will this action uh cause any residents of either shelby going to fayette or fayette going to shelby no Nothing will change for these Nothing residents at change. all. Yes. They'll okay. vote in the Shelby County elections. They'll pay property taxes in, in Shelby County. Okay. Nothing will change for these folks. Representative Thompson. Yeah. The reason, I, 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 as I'm sure we all know um, who's involved in this, you know, our, the county commissioner for that area does live in one of those questionable areas. Mm -hmm. so, okay. That yeah, this would take change. care of that. Thank you. Any other questions for the speaker? Seeing none, we'll go back in session and we'll hear from Representative Leatherwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any questions? I'm ready to answer. Representative them. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, just one question in reference to 
the resolutions that were submitted to the chairman, uh, have they seen this language, both the county as well, Shelby and Fayette? Representative Leatherwood. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Any other and, questions for the sponsor? Thank you. Seeing none, I think we're ready to vote on House Bill 126. Moving on to calendar and rules. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to calendar and rules. Thank you. All right. I think we are caught back up, so we'll go to item 21. Is represent? Yeah, there he is. House Bill 361 by uh, Representative Love. Got a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, Representative Love, you're recognized on your bill, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. As we talk about efforts to increase affordable housing stock, many times we have nonprofit organizations that provide housing at a amount that is below market rate, but will still have to pay the prevailing property tax assessment because they're renting the property out and they're not exempt from property taxes. This piece of legislation is permissive and it allows a municipal or county government to create a grant program for nonprofit organizations that own and rent residential property at at least 25% below market rate upon approval of the program by the Comptroller of the Treasury and it will allow them to provide a grant for an amount that is equal to or less than what that organization paid in property taxes. So it's not a property tax reimbursement, but it sets that mark there to say, once you paid your property taxes, and if the Comptroller's Office has approved your program, a municipal or county government can create a program that can issue grants to nonprofit organizations who rent property below market value. We had an experience in my district where a lot of the nonprofit organizations were uh, hampered with continuing to rent property below market value and yet having to pay property taxes at the rate that other organizations were paying at and were having difficulty. And so we had conversation about one way to find some benefit for them. And this is the idea that we came up with. So I'm standing here for questions. Any questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on House Bill 361. Moving on to Finance, Ways, and Means. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to Finance, Ways, and Means. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. I think you have the next one, too, Representative Love. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, House Bill 366. Uh, do I have a motion? Proper motion and second. Representative Love, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And committee members, you may be aware that we have two programs that assist property owners. One is a property tax relief program, and the other is a property tax freeze program. The property tax freeze program has income limits on it, just like property tax relief does. Property tax freeze program limit is based upon either what the property tax relief program income limit is, or what is the average income of persons 62 years old to 70 years old in that county. The difficulty for many counties that participate in the program of property freeze is that the local government cannot increase the income limit. So for example, you have 24 counties that participate in the property tax freeze program and the income limits range anywhere from $31,600 to $56,000. What that means is a person who's applying for property tax freeze cannot make more than $56,000 in some counties, and in some counties can't make more than $31,000 to qualify for the program. This particular bill offers a third option for counties who want to participate in the property tax freeze program, and it simply says you have the option of considering $60,000 as the income limit also for the property tax freeze program. They still can choose the other two options, but it gives them a third option to say, if you have uh, citizens in your district or your county who want to try to apply for the property tax freeze program and their income is below $60,000, you can choose that option to qualify them for the freeze program. And I stand for questions. Any questions for the sponsor? 
Seeing none, without objection, we're ready to vote on House Bill 366, moving on to Finance, Ways, and Means. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to Finance, Ways, and Means. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Item 23, House Bill 699 has been, uh, we're going to, without objection, roll that one week. Item 24, House Bill 0033 by Representative Thompson. Do I have a motion? Proper motion and second. I do see it has an amendment. Please give us your drafting code, Representative Thompson, and you are recognized to present from your seat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, drafting code is 5766. That is correct. Do I have a motion on the amendment? Proper motion and second on the amendment. Does the amendment make the bill? Uh, yes. Okay. We'll go ahead and place the bill, I mean the amendment on the bill to be discussed. All those in favor of amendment number 5766 going on the bill, please say aye. Opposed, no. The amendment is now on the bill. You're recognized, Representative Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the bill is uh, comes from the Shelby County Assessor of Property, and it's supported by the Tennessee Association of Assessing Officers. Uh, I can go fast through the uh, different sections if it would help to understand. Um, the uh, section one establishes a framework for the assessor of property to assist in disasters and emergencies. The purpose in, of the assessor involvement is to survey the property damage and determine assessments or value estimates of damage for uh, tax reductions. Uh, the second part is, deals with uh, record sharing uh, from cities and counties to assist the assessor and valuation and performance of their duties. And three and four are uh, permissive to each city and county. Uh, these se sections deal with property tax reductions for loss of property, of both, both real and personal property, when the property is restored before September 1 in the year of the event. Under current law, there is no reduction if the property is restored by September 1. Uh, this would add a new section that would allow for cities and counties to reduce taxes for the period of loss when it's restored before September 1. And the provision uh, has been established previously by general assemblies for major disasters, and then the provision would sunset. This would make the provision permanent and still permissive to local governments. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, without objection, we're ready to vote on House Bill 33, moving on to Finance, Ways, and Means. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill goes on to Finance, Ways, and Means. Thank you, Chair and Committee. Item 25, House Bill 1118 by Representative Carr has been requested by the sponsor to be taken off notice. Without objection, off notice. Item 26, House Bill 828 by Chairman Rudd. Do I have a motion? Proper motion in second. I do see we have an amendment. Can you please give us your drafting code? Yes, sir. That is... Five eight four nine. That is correct. Do I have a motion on the amendment? Motion. Proper motion and second on the amendment. Does the amendment make the bill? Yes, it does. All right. To be discussed, we'll go ahead and place amendment five eight four nine on the House Bill eight twenty eight. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill's now amended. You're recognized, Chairman Rudd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the same bill with a technical correction uh, that we passed last year that stalled in the Senate. Uh, this simply puts up, it does not change any state law. It simply posts an 11 um, by eight and a half yellow sign at each precinct warning people that crossing over into each party's primary under current state law is a class C misdemeanor. And it's also found that it's also a class D felony if you uh, uh, crossover and also if you vote in multiple primaries. Uh, 
under that code. So uh, rather than list misdemeanor or felony, we just put it as a crime and we list the codes. And this is just simply to be posted at each precinct to warn uh, the voters that they could potentially be breaking the law so that they're not surprised by it. But again, it does not change any state law. It just any warns questions? the voter. Any questions for the sponsor? Representative Miller, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Mr. Chairman, under this amendment, with each voter that's entering, I guess, a, a voting precinct or whatever, would they be required to read this? Re Chairman Rudd, you're recognized. Uh, no, no one's requiring them. It's just posted uh, for their information if they so choose to read it. That's why Miller. we put it in yellow so it's noticeable if they wish to read it. Representative Miller for follow-up. What, what does the current law establish? Chairman Rudd. The current law states that if you cross over, let's see, if you cross over and if you knowingly cross over in the other party's primary, it is a Class C misdemeanor under 219.102, but also in code we found dating back to the 70s uh, and updated throughout the years in Section 219.107, it's also a Class D misdemeanor. Now, we do not list Class C misdemeanor or Class D felony. We simply state it's a crime and the two codes on the, on the warning. Representative Miller? Is, is, is the current law being enforced? Chairman Rudd. Not to my knowledge in recent times. Whether it's been um, before the 2000s, I do not know. Any other questions for the sponsor? Representative Miller. You mentioned, uh, let's see, there's a, a Class C misdemeanor. Explain that to me. What is, what is the Class C? Chairman misdemeanor? Rudd. Uh, you'd have to get a legal to have them explain that exact punishment. I think it's a uh, legal would probably know what a Class C misdemeanor is and what the penalties would be. I don't know. Without objection, we'll go out of session. Representative Miller, ask your question to the legal. Well, yes, uh, 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 define a Class C misdemeanor. And, and then it was also mentioned about a felony somewhere in here. They also answer that question, what's a felony? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Josh Hughes from Legal Services. Give me just a second to find that. So a Class D felony, uh, uh, the sentence ranges is for uh, not less than two years nor more than 12 years, uh, and then up to it a $5,000 fine. And for a Class C misdemeanor is 30 days in jail or a fine not exceeding $50. Representative Miller, you have a follow-up for legal? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank okay. you. Without objection, we'll go back in session. Representative Miller, you're recognized. So, so yes, Mr. Chairman, now that I know what a, the, the Class D is, I, I'm trying to understand now, if a voter went into a, a, a polling booth or, or center and they decided to... Uh, vote in a, a pri an open primary, they are, and if they're not a bona fide, I guess, Republican, and you can help me along with this, then they could very well be breaking the law. Chairman Rudd. Uh, under, under, again, we're not setting this. This is just a warning sign of current state law. Under current state law and two separate parts of the code, One's an older code, the other's a newer code. The misdemeanor is a newer code, which is where we've been focusing the last few years. And then we discovered it's also an older code that's much broader than just crossing over. It's against state law today if you knowingly cross over into the other person's primary. If you vote in a primary that you're not affiliated with, that you're not bona fide, that's current state law. However, proving that is somewhat difficult because you have to prove a pattern. So just accusing a Democrat, someone who's had a Democrat record their whole life and they voted in a Republican primary once, is not really a violation of the law unless you go back to the other person's primary, then that's proved that you only crossed over for that one election. Or if you admitted it, uh, that you did it, that, that could bring you and that would be a violation of current law. Representative Miller? Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I'm just trying to come up in my 
head of an example of how an, an independent voter or a Democratic voter goes into a, a primary and, and they knowingly <laughs> know that they are breaking the law and it could cost them 12 years in jail. I, you, you know, I'm trying to... Why are we really doing this? I... Chairman Rudd. Uh, well, again, we're not creating any punishment in this bill. If anything, this is helping the voter avoid, because I don't know if every voter knows that they're committing a crime. This is at least an attempt to let them know with this yellow sign notice at the precincts. Otherwise, they could go in there, think they're not committing a crime, and there's no punishment for what they're doing. Um, I'd like every voter to be have to take a class in this to know, but we're not doing that. This is simply a warning sign at each precinct. It's it's an attempt to let them know they could be breaking the law, and that's all it's doing. I'd like it to be going a lot further, but it's not. And again, this is not establishing misdemeanor or felony. That's already in state law. This is only warning them that they could be breaking the law if they do it. Representative Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, I know that uh, each party has defined what bona fide means. In fact, I even wrote the bona fide thing for my party. Uh, but is there a, a specific designation in the uh, in, in uh, Tennessee code that uh, defines bona fide member of a political party? Chairman Rudd. Uh, no, that, that is strictly the, the legal definition of each party. And the state recognizes each party to uh, describe what their bona fide status is. Since the, the state has very limited ability to tell the parties what to do with their internal workings. Uh, so the who can be a member of each party, whether you have to pay dues, whether you have to be active, who can and can't run, how many primaries you vote in to, to run for office or to be an officer, all that's defined by each party, and the state legislature cannot interfere with their, since they're both private organizations. But we leave it in state law. We say bona fide status. That's up to each party to define. Representative Thompson, for a follow-up. Uh, thank you. But I would think that if if it's up to the parties to make that definition, that it should be up to the parties to to post anything or or inform voters in any any way uh, legally and feasibly. So I I don't think it's the business of of um, of the uh, our election commissions to do this. Thank you. Any other questions for um, the sponsor? May I miss You're recognized, Chairman. The parties have no, um, once a candidate is qualified or disqualified based on their bona fide status, the parties have no authority at the precincts. That is run by the election commission. Now, the parties can just have a caucus or a primary to select theirs and bypass the primaries if they wanted to. Uh, but uh, once they're they're Put there, they can only control the nominating process and the election process. Parties can overturn an election based on certain criteria. But again, they don't have any authority at a precinct. Only the election commission controls that. We allow them to use that to choose their nominees. Any other questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on House Bill 828. Moving on to finance, ways, and means. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. If you'd like to be recorded as a no, please see the clerk. I apologize, committee. I should have recognized Chairman Rudd to present from his seat, but I did not. So uh, that's my fault. Uh, item 27, House Bill 419 by Chairman Wright. Chairman Wright, you are recognized to present from your chair. I do see that we have an amendment. Can you please give us your drafting code? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for being recognized yeah. at my desk. The uh, amendment number is 004816. I'm sorry, committee. Uh, I did not get the motion and second on the bill. We need to do that no, before. No. Proper motion and second on the bill. Now we are discussing amendment drafting code 4816. I have received a proper motion and second on it as well. Uh, 
Chairman Wright, would you like for us to place this on the bill to be discussed? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since it makes the bill, please. All those in favor of Amendment 4816 going on the bill, please say aye. Opposed, no. The amendment's now on the bill. You're recognized, Chairman Wright. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the local sales tax option, there is a 1.125% slice taken from the local part of the sales tax money used to cover the overhead of collecting sales tax. Those dollars are more than and in excess of the cost of collecting sales tax in total. The purpose of this bill is to reduce that 1.125% down to 0.5% over the next three years. And with that explanation, I stand. I will be seated for questions. Any questions for the seated sponsor? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on House Bill 419. All those in favor of it moving on to finance, ways, and means, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to finance, ways, and means. We have taken care of item 28. So at this time, I have some bills coming up. I will pass the gavel to Vice Chairman Wright. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next item on the agenda is item number 29, House Bill 0471. Um, it will, without objection, be rolled to the final calendar. And the next item on the agenda is item number 30, House Bill 1039, presented by Chairman Crawford. I hear a motion. Second. Have a motion and second. Chairman Crawford, you present your bill. Thank you, Vice Chairman Wright. Uh, this bill was brought to me um, to be um, a redistricting uh, approval bill, so to speak. Every 10 years we do redistricting, and this bill deals with the geocoding to verify that information. This will make it a unified process. All county elections uh, commissions will have to follow this. Um, the coordinator of elections will share the addresses and the district data with the comptroller's office. The comptroller's office will then verify if that uh, residence is in the district. The comptroller's office will then compare the information from the federal and state uh, GIS information. The comptroller's office will then provide the results to our election officials and anything that's out of line or is not exactly correct uh, due to the redistricting, then the corrections will be made by the comptroller and the coordinator of elections for those districts. This process will ensure that all voter assignments have been uniformly verified after each 10-year redistricting. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Are there questions of the presenter? Seeing no questions, we're voting on House Bill 1039. All those in favor of sending House Bill 1039 to the Calendar and Rules Committee say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. House Bill 1039 moves to Calendar and Rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Vice Chairman Wright, for that. Uh, before we close, does any of the members have any personal orders or announcements? Seeing none, we will be meeting next week. We've had several bills rolled, uh, so we will be meeting again next week, but we're getting close to being able to shut this down uh, as, long as, the, as well as the subcommittees. So at this time, I appreciate your all's hard work. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move, we are adjourned.